Jameson Mitchell here, and in this video, I'll be doing your tarot reading for the week of December the 14th, 2015. So stay tuned. And here we are at the table, and the deck assisting me for this week's reading is the Universal Weight Tarot deck. And so, just like I do with every weekly general reading that I do, I take the deck and I'm going to ask, what do we need to know for the week ahead? And as I shuffle, I look for cards to stick out. So the card, first card, is going to represent the beginning of the week. Second card represents the middle of the week. And then our final card will represent the end of the week. And I always look first at the card on the bottom of the deck. That serves as the foundation or the base card for the week. So I'm turning the deck over. And here we have the Five of Wands. So the Five of Wands is a card that can represent things like competition and conflict and strife. So it could be a sense of feeling, a sense of um, competing energy. So now sometimes this can represent being at odds with other people or being at odds with ourselves. So it could be going for some of us one way, it could be going for others of us the other way. So, but this card represents being at odds with either other people or ourselves. So now it could be for some of us that we may be experiencing a sense of scattered energy. Um, and so with that, this card is asking us to consider focusing on one thing. For some of us, this card can represent uh, being in a situation, and since there are other people, there are five young men on the card, it could be uh, a group kind of thing. So it could be like trying to work out something with a group of people. So there could be some energy tied to that. Now, sometimes if you look at this from a spiritual perspective, which is how I sometimes tend to look at the cards. The cards can be read from different levels. And so from a spiritual level, this represents what spirit, spirit are you going to be involved in this week? Are you going to be in the spirit of competition, carrying the belief? Because this is a five card and five in tarot for me represents beliefs and belief systems. So do you look at life as, um, you know, from a place of believing that it's a competition, it's a rat race, you know, it's every man for himself? Or are you going to adopt the idea that people are in situations um, together? So this would be a form of coming together, collaboration, cooperation. So this week we're being asked to look at how do we look at life? Do we look at life from a spirit or play in the game of life because this card can represent, you know, um, playful activities or sporting competitions, things like that. You know, so do we play in the game of life from a, a, a spirit of competition or do we play the game of life from a place or spirit of cooperation? So again, this could be, you know, being at odds with ourselves or other people. This could be, you know, where are you playing in the game of life in terms of spiritual energy? Are you putting it into um, cooperation or are you putting it into that sense of competition? The last thing I want to say about this card is that it can be uh, uh, for those of us who tend to uh, have a short fuse or tend to run a little bit on the impatient side. This card warns us not to let petty irritations or annoyances get the best of us because this is a warning card for it will be just like little things that will just irritate you. And so um, you have to be on the lookout for that. But I'm going to go more with the idea of playing the game of life this week. And are we going to play from um, competition or cooperation? So now the card that represents the beginning of the week is the six of wands. Okay, so we have 
a lot of wand energy here so far because both cards were wands. Now the six of wands is a great card. So at the beginning of the week, we may be um, in a place where we are receiving lots of praise because this card is about praise. It's about acclaim. It's about recognition. Um, for those of us who are working, you know, whether you are self-employed or you employed, this card represents, you know, looking for rewarding work. Um, so this card represents, you know, rewarding work and whatever that means for you. But no matter what that means for you, this card also carries with it the underlying idea that it should be work that allows you to be recognized in some way because this card carries it with it, you know, either recognition, public recognition or a need for recognition. And so, again, when I worked in my corporate job, we used to I was part of a a focus group and so we were charged with the idea of like getting to the core of what recognition meant because a lot of people in the company at the time that I was there you know that was an issue you know and so recognition is a, a singular thing it represents a different thing to every person so you have to ask yourself in terms of recognition what does that mean for me the other thing with the six of wands it represents gaining support so there may be some support that you are gaining um, I always see this card as like, you know, the people who are, you know, behind the person on the horse, they are his, his support system, his cheerleaders, if you will, they're cheering him on, you know, he has achieved some level of victory or success because that's the, uh, the laurel wreath. And so with that, they are cheering him on. They're his supporters. And so who are your cheerleaders this week? Who are the people that are going to be supporting you as you embark on what it is that you deem to be? rewarding or meaningful work. Now, I sometimes see this card as, you know, a public speaking card. So if you happen to be a public speaker, then this card is asking you to consider some things like this. What is your platform? Who is your audience? What's your message? Then this card, since it came right after the five of wands, then this card says, the idea here is like, it could be a competitive field or a competitive market or a competitive industry. And you have to choose because the six in tarot numerology for me represents choices. So you have to make the choice of whether you're going to stay at the level that everybody else is playing at, which is the competition thing. And sometimes the competition thing also creates a, the belief in lack, like there's not enough. And so people have to, you know, kind of compete and, and, and be cutthroat and all those kinds of things. Or you can elevate yourself. He's on a horse, so he's elevating himself and moving forward with the idea that there's enough for everybody. It's just a matter of finding who is your audience and who is going to resonate with your message. So... Uh, and then the five of wands would be that part that says, ignore the haters, understanding that your message is not going to be for everyone and you have to be okay with that. Instead of, you know, trying to compete and trying to compete for people who aren't going to resonate with your message anyway, this card says, move for the people who are going to respond and resonate with your message. So... You know, that could be with any industry, but I tend to see the Six of Wands as a public speaking card. So I just went with that one. So now in the middle of the week, we have the Six of Pentacles. So now this is very interesting. We have two sixes here. So as a theme for me, the number six represents choices. So we are being asked to look at choices we're making this week, especially in terms of work. The Wands as a suit represents work, business, enterprise. The pentacles represents, you know, the money. So we have work and money. So some of us may be kind of like, and they're a twofold issue. So for some of us, it could be a need for recognition. For some of us, it could be a matter of pay. Going with the six of pentacles. And if you remember, last week's reading had the six of Ariel. So there was a lot of things in that that are going to repeat in this card. This card represents you know, the giving and receiving in balance because the merchant is holding scales. So for me, that always represents balance. And so I always see this too as a law of attraction card. And so the law talks about like attracting like, and that's exactly what I was talking about with the six of wands in terms of finding your audience. It's about the people who are going to resonate with you. And I, I 
checked out this guy on YouTube. His name is Sav Savan Champel. And when he said, he was talking about like finding your tribe. And so in terms of law of attraction, he was saying, first you have to have the vibe and then you find your tribe because that's what happens is that you have to be vibrating at the frequency that your tribe is at. So first you have to be at that frequency and vibrate from that place and then the people who need to find you and I'm going with the, the people who are on their knees because they are needing something, they are wanting something, they're wanting whatever it is this merchant has for them. They deem it valuable. So that's what it is in terms of your audience. It has to be the people who need what you want or what you want to put out, I should say. They need it, they want it, um, they are you know, receptive to it, their hands are open for it. That, those are the people that you want to have. So now, looking at that. So now, another aspect of it, I talked about speaking with this one um, as a possible industry, or, uh, but with the Six of Pentacles, that could be, um, I'm thinking of like service occupations. So again, you know, people who um, have a service or a service profession, this card would suggest either you know, who is it that needs what it is that you have to offer. Now, in terms of money, this could be the week where you have to make the decision on whether you're going to ask for a raise or a promotion or something of that nature because that's what this card can represent. Um, it represents a pay increase. For some of us, we have to make the choice of where we are going to put our time, our energy, our resources because that's what Pentacles are all about. It represents material resources. So we are being asked to look at where are we putting our time, our energy, our resources into. Are we putting it into people going with the Five of Wands as the foundation card? Are we putting it into people who, you know, um, just don't get it, you know, people that we're at odds with, you know, people who leave us uh, are drained and worn out, you know, that kind of thing. Or are we going to put it into people who are going to kind of um, invigorate us, you know, inspire us, motivate us, that kind of energy. So we get to choose. Again, we have the sixes here going back to back. So it's a matter of choice. The other thing here with this card, the Six of Pentacles, is that we may be looking at you know, where can we um, donate our time? Because I see this as, you know, donations, charities, you know, giving of yourself, you know, being generous, you know. So where can we uh, demonstrate our generosity this week? And we get to make the choice of where we're going to do that. The other thing here about these two cards, they're attached to the Lovers card because the Lovers is the sixth major arcana card in tarot. So going with the relationship aspect of this is that be mindful of our relationship. Are we in a relationship where we're always the one who's giving, giving, giving? Or are we on the receiving end and always, you know, um, asking for the other person to give to us constantly and consistently? You know, that kind of thing. And so we're if we're falling into one pattern of behavior more than the other, then the scales here is asking us, how can we kind of swing that more into balance? Now, the other thing I see with this card here, there's a lot with this card. The other thing I see with this card is that the there is a dynamic again about, you know, the idea of abundance versus lack, if you go with that. The guy in the on this one side here receiving the, the coins he could be demonstrating the principle of of abundance you know the idea of like he just knows and trusts that you know if he asks for it and allows himself to be open to receiving it he will receive it if you look at the merchant here then the merchant is source you know this is the idea of like knowing and trusting that source will provide for you when you need it and then the other man who looks like he's waiting his turn could be the idea of like, you know, that idea of like, um, he could be demonstrating the idea of scarcity. Like, you know, he's looking at the scene and could be saying like, is he ever, is the guy going to turn around and give me something? Am I going to get mine? You know, that kind of thing. And so it could be like the idea of like, just like waiting and waiting and waiting. And sometimes with that idea going with the law of attraction is we create the experience of always waiting. So it could be like, you know, the idea here is like if you're in that space and you're you're feeling like 
things are not coming your way, ask yourself, what thoughts am I holding about that? Because that might need to change. You know, the other thing here about this is that sometimes we have to be discriminating. It could be one or two things. We have to be discriminating about where we're going to put our time and our energy and our resources. So we have to kind of make the decision, like who best needs what it is that we have. And then sometimes, do we take the time to base our giving, no matter what form it is, based on appearances? You know, it could be like he's looking at this guy and there may be something that he's determining or deeming that he deserves whatever he's going to give and this other person for whatever reason is not. You know, so, you know, it could go one or two ways. Either we have to be more discriminating about where we're going to put our energy and our resources or that we may be basing it on appearances and is that really in the best and highest good? Is that really fair to everyone involved going with the scales? So that's a lot to consider with that card this week. Now, moving on to the end of the week, we have the King of Pentacles. So this is very interesting. We have two wands and we have two pentacles. So that's a lot of the energy this week. So it's, a, it's again, it's a lot about, you know, being in, inspired and motivated to take some form of action going with the wands. Um, it could also be about work or business or enterprise. And then on the flip side, with two pentacles, it could be the idea of um, material resources. So the king of pentacles represents, you know, the idea of mastering your physical realm. He has mastered all his material resources. He has put in the hard work and the effort going with the first two cards. He's put in the hard work and the effort. And now he gets to reap the benefits, you know, of that hard work. It's like hard work pays off in a way. It's a sign, the sign of Taurus. If you look here, there's the bull and there's bulls here. So that's a sign of Taurus. So Taurus for me is a sign of ownership and possession. So it could be with this card representing an astrological sign. It could be like we're talking about the idea of ownership and possessions and money, things of that nature. Or it could be if you happen to be a Taurus person watching this, then this could be you. Or if you are involved with a Taurus person in your circle, then it could be representing that person to you. Going with the Five of Wands being a circle of people. The other thing about the King of Pentacles, and I talked about two different types of industries here. I talked about public speaking and I talked about service occupations. Then this card here would be, you know, uh, self-employment. So again, both of these industries could be a person who's self-employed, but I definitely see that with the King of Pentacles. So again, this is just represents, you know, reaping... Uh, reaping what it is that you've sown. So again, going back to the, and that's really what the law of attraction is. You, you just, you, you reap what you sow. And so you have to be mindful of where you're putting your energy because you get a return on that investment of your time, your energy, and your resources. So the next thing we can do is we can look at what the major arcana card is that's going to represent the overall lesson for the week. So we will get right to that. Okay, and so now looking at the numerical value of all the cards, not the base card, just the three cards that are forming the line, we have a six with the six of wands, we have a six again with the six of pentacles, and then we have a 14 with the king of pentacles. So for me, that's 26. And so I'm looking for a card between 0 and 22 because there are 22 major arcana cards in tarot. And so the since the number is over 22, it's 26, I'm going to add the 2 and the 6 together. And that's going to give us 8. And so the 8th major arcana card in the deck is Strength. And so Strength as an overall lesson, here's the card. Strength as the lesson card, I just set it right there, is that this is a week for us to consider how we can operate from a place of self-control, self excuse me, or restraint, because the woman on the card is taming the lion. And so that represents taming our wild side. So taming our our tendency to, to roar, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So kind of keeping that in check. And so going, and especially with the idea of going um, 
with the five of wands being like, you know, petty irritations and annoyances possibly, you know, then strength is asking us to consider how we can be more patient. Um, how can we demonstrate some self-control, self-control, excuse me, and some restraint. Now, going with the idea that the five of wands was talking about the idea of like, you know, scattering your energy. Then the strength card is a health card or a healing card and it represents a return to stamina or a return to health. So if you're feeling like you're out of focus, if you're feeling like you've been scattered, then this is a good card to have because it represents that that energy is changing. You know, if we're talking about, you know, the idea of work, then the strength card is asking us to do what it is that we feel inclined to do that is you know, in alignment with our sense of confidence, because this is a, a self-confidence card, and our sense of self-esteem. So I'm seeing that with the strength card as well. Now, she has the infinity symbol above her head, and so that represents for me the connection with the infinite, or infinite intelligence. And so going with that, it also represents the number eight, just like it's the eighth card. So again, going with the idea of the the material cards, the Six of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles, then Strength is a card that represents material success. It's a number that represents abundance. So it is a, a money number. So this, like, how can we go, you know, how do we deal with the abundance that we have, you know, and how can we create more, possibly? as the the lesson here with the number eight on the strength card. The other thing with the strength card is that I also see this as a card that can represent power. You know, the eight in numerology is a power number. So I always see this with the number eight whenever it shows up. So it's, it's also about material success and abundance, but it could also be about power issues. And so, um, you know, it could be about like, where are we placing our power? Are we you know, um, giving our power away? Uh, are we lording our power over other people? You know, this might be a week where we have to kind of check ourselves going with the scales on the Six of Pentacles and see how we can restore the balance of power, so to speak. You know, the idea here with the Six of Pentacles could be the idea of like having versus not having. You know, I'm seeing, uh, you know, that TV show in my head uh, that comes on, um, the own network. It's called the have the haves and the have nots. So I'm seeing that. I'm seeing like some imagery from that show. So basically that's about, you know, our sense of worthiness. Pentacles can represent our own sense of worth. And that is a self-esteem issue, by the way, going with strength. Our own sense of worth and value. And so we may be making choices from a place of whether we believe we have value or what it is that we're doing in the world has value or not. So that's the strength card for this week. So again, summing up, we have the Six of Wands at the beginning of the week. This is a card of rep uh, representing uh, recognition, you know, acclaim, praise. It could be about moving into a sphere where you are finding rewarding or meaningful work. And also, too, is if you are in a place where you're needing the support of other people, make sure that it's people who are in alignment with you, people who can um, be your cheerleaders and, and, and spur you on. Uh, middle of the week, we have the Six of Pentacles. This card is about, you know, if, you know, there is a work-related issue, you might find yourself with the idea of, you know, being faced with, you know, are you making enough money? Are you earning enough? If not, you know, are you going to consider the idea of asking for a raise? Or if you're considering moving up the ladder, are you going to consider the idea of asking for a promotion? You know, also with the Six of Pentacles, it's about looking at our giving and receiving in balance, you know, our sense of deserving and allowing, you know, and coming from a place of knowing that source is abundant and that there's enough for everyone, that kind of thing. And also, too, where are you going to put your time, your energy, and your resources this week? Because you have the choice. Two sixes here. Like, this is your choice. The choice is in your hands. And then the King of Pentacles rounding out the week is, you know, the time and the energy that you put into a situation, you reap that because the King of Pentacles for me is about hard work paying off. Uh, that kind of thing also, too, is about looking at our sense of abundance, uh, not necessarily in terms of what we own, but, our, you know, as a reflection of our own sense of worth and value. Everything that we own is a reflection of 
what we what we believe in terms of our own values, our core value system and you know and what we value. So when you're going out and about and you're shopping or you're spending money or whatever it is that you're doing with your financial transactions, everything that you purchase is a reflection of what you value. So that's just food for thought. So this has been your week in tarot. I am Jameson Mitchell and I look forward to sharing this space here with you in our next video. And until then, have a tarotastic week and take care.